Hello everyone, welcome to my talk, Sealing the Gaps, a deep dive into JavaScript memory leak detection. So as you might guess, this talk will be about JavaScript memory consumption and how to identify JavaScript memory leaks happening in your application. Have you, have you ever seen this specific error message which says, oh snap, something went wrong? So the number one reason behind it is most probably too high memory consumption of a given Chrome tab so the browser decides to kill the tab and give you this error message. And the reason behind, behind too much memory consumption can also be memory leaks. So before we go into any detail, let me quickly introduce myself. Hi, I'm Julian Jandl. I'm performance engineer at the company Pushbase. So let's first talk about memory consumption. What consumes memory in our application? There are three main contributors um, that contribute to the amount of memory of our application or of the given um, browser tab running our application. On the first hand, we have JavaScript code we write, then we have the DOM we produce with our templates, and we have the composition layer we produce with our style sheets. So let's first talk about JavaScript. Um, whenever you store an object, in this case, uh, just a simple object with one property which says title Spider-Man, we stored in memory. We just said, say, let movie equals this object, and this object is now stored in memory. As soon as we nullify this object back again, then we release this object from memory back. Then we have the case of immutability. So whenever you create a copy, for example, of the object we have created before, then we create a shallow copy, which says, okay, we have to copy all the primitive values. In this case, we will consume twice memory as before, because movie copy is now its very own copied object and not a reference to the other one anymore. Then we have DOM nodes. So for each DOM node we create, they are stored as strings. And if they contain attributes and other um, strings, for example, text or other values, then this is also stored in, your, uh, in the memory of your browser tab. And finally, we have the composition layers. So whenever you have any specific uh, rule that uh, promotes a new layer, uh, for example, if you say will change transform or you use directly the transform tr um, property CSS attribute, then you will pr promote a new layer which consumes memory, but in this case, specifically on your GPU. So if your device has a dedicated graphics card, then the memory will be stored on your GPU. This is specifically important for lower uh, end devices like mobile phones because they uh, most probably have not enough uh, dedicated GPU memory available. So let's inspect the DOM and the JavaScript memory. Um, we go twofold here. So in, in the first one, we want to have a bird's eye view, and then we want to do an in-depth analysis. So let's start with the bird's eye view. We have multiple tools that help us here. So we can, for example, use the performance monitor of the Chrome DevTools, which gives us an overview or um, over a time span about the memory consumption um, of our JavaScript heap and about the amount of DOM nodes and the amount of JavaScript event listeners. This is very important because all of them contribute as well to the memory of our Chrome tab in total. Then we have the task manager, um, which also gives you an indicator about the memory footprint. This doesn't have to be completely in line with what the performance monitor tells you because the mem memory footprint uh, contains more information than just those metrics. We can see the uh, JavaScript memories, so the JS heap size here in the last column where it says JavaScript memory. And finally, this is a very new feature just dropped with the new Chrome, um, where, you, where the Chrome browser can tell you by hovering over your tab how much memory it uses, so you do not have to open the task manager anymore. You can simply over, uh, hover over your tab bar. And this is a pretty cool new feature. So this, um, all of those metrics give you just an indication about how much memory your application right now uses or over a very um, a tiny time span. But let's go into an in-depth analysis. Let's find out what happens inside there and how the data is stored in there. So before we go into the in-depth analysis, let's talk about the terminology because we have to introduce some words here. Um, the first and most important one, I guess, is the memory heap. So the memory heap is a interconnected graph, which means your objects are uh, not only simple objects, but they only have references to each other. 
So if you store a reference from one object to another, then this will be also part of the memory heap. And um, if you want to remove objects from the memory heap, it has to traverse the whole graph in order to find anything. So it only it, it not only stores objects, but also their um, references to other objects, as well as primitive values belonging to different objects. Then we have object sizes, and this is threefold. We have the shallow size, which describes only the size of this very specific one object we are taking a look at. Um, then we have the retained size, which gives us information about everything this um, node will release when we remove this specific object from the memory. So also taking account into um, everything that relates to this object and not only the object itself. So this is the metric we, uh, which is most important when you want to prioritize after um, which nodes are most important to release from the memory because the retained size gives you the information. If I remove this one uh, from the memory, then retained size will be the amount of memory I save from that. And finally, we have the distance. Distance is telling you the um, distance the garbage collector, collector needs to travel, so the paths the garbage collector needs to travel over the graph in order to find a given node and to finally release it um, within the next garbage collecting cycle. So after all this uh, terminology, let's find out which tools we have in order to inspect the memory of our JavaScript applications. So first of all, we have the memory tab of the Chrome browser. You can find it by opening the DevTools and then simply selecting the memory tab. Um, before you want to start any analysis or uh, create a heap snapshot, you always want to trigger the garbage collector, which is indicated by this tiny garbage icon here on top. And then you can take a snapshot here down uh, with the blue button, which says uh, take snapshot. This will create now a heap snap snapshot for you and you would be um, ported over to an overview, which uh, will basically give you an information about all the nodes that are stored in your um, in your app. So all the arrays, all the strings, everything that belongs to window, all anonymous functions that are somewhere stored. So basically everything that is accessible in your memory and uh, used by your application is, current, is now visible in this snapshot and you can search it and filter it. So let's take a look at how you do that. So there is a little search bar on top where it says class filter and in the demo we will go over um, next, I have a class, for example, named find me. So if you search for it, it will um, filter all the uh, summary, uh, all the overview entries, and will give you only the entry which says find me, and you can inspect it then. So you will see with the tiny at symbol here, this is the ID of the node stored in your memory, and it will give you also an indication where this object, specific object, is actually created. Um, as you can also see here, you will be informed about the distance and the shallow size and the retained size. So those three terms we discussed before uh, when inspecting nodes in the heap snapshot. Mm, if you select one of those nodes, you will be given a retainers list. <clears throat> and the retainers list is one specific super cool feature to inspect memory leaks, which we will use later on, because this will tell you objects that still rely on this um, specific node. So if you want to trace down um, the memory heap, then you search in the retainers list, which is uh, which other node is still keeping the one I'm searching for in memory. So let's go on a quick demo where we show, uh, where we quick, quickly go over the memory tab capabilities. So here you, here you can see a very simple code example, just with this find me class, which I was telling about before. So this find me class has just a content property, which has just a very large array to have artificially large memory consumption. So we can see some number in our memory heap snapshot. And finally, we create a const out of it, which says new find me. And um, then we console log it to the console. So let's take a look at how this one looks in our browser. 
So we have just the title here. We will open now the memory tab. So I've opened the uh, Chrome Dev Tools. We don't need the performance monitor for now, but let's take a look at the memory tab here. So the first thing we want to do is collecting garbage. Then we want to take a heap snapshot. And as we can see, five megabytes, pretty large for just the title. So let's search for find me. And as you can see here, now we have found our object, which says found me, find me with um, this specific node ID. And when we click it, it will open up the retainers list down here in the bottom, and it will point us to a, a line of code where this is still in use. But in this case, this is a stack bits example, and we have just a global const. So this will not go anywhere from this point. We will go over memory, memory leak detection afterwards, but this is just a cool feature um, for inspecting which other lines of code, code are still affecting this find me property. Okay, so let's go back to our presentation. Um, we have now discussed how to inspect or how to um, get an overview over our properties stored in the JavaScript memory heap via the memory tab in the Chrome DevTools. Um, what we didn't inspect were our composition layers, but I introduced it before. So let's talk about that as well. So I have an example here from Observable HQ, from the Observable HQ landing page. And as you can see here, there's a UI element which um, just shifts elements on a pane left and right. And if you inspect it via the layer tool and shift the application a little bit, then you can see all of those images and all of those tiles are actually on their very own layers. And what does that mean for our memory consumption? So you have seen this slide before, but I want to emphasize this once again. So there are certain rules that promote a new layer in your, um, in your application. So whenever you use one of those, it will promote a new CSS layer, and this will consume memory on the GPU of your device. And how much we can also inspect. So other reasons besides the two we have seen before that promote a layer are, for example, 3D or perspective changes. A video element always promotes a new layer. Canvas elements always promotes new layers. Um, animated opacities or transforms. And if you're uh, if you have a sibling with the lower Z index plus a new stacking index, so how to inspect those layers? How does how does this work? There is a tool in the Chrome Dev Tools which says layers. You can reach it because it's not enabled by default by uh, clicking this three button menu on top and then select more tools and there you find layers. So you can just open the layer tool and it will open this. Uh, nice overview for you where you can zoom and tilt and pinch into the into the viewport and see basically a 3D view of the application where all the layers are separately displayed. It also gives you detailed information about the layers. And as you can see here down below, here's a memory estimate and a composition reason. So if you want to find out why this element in your browser has uh, was promoted to a new layer, then you can just use this tool to inspect it, select your layer via the layer tool, and it will give you the reason why it was composited into a new layer. And also you see this uh, particular layer consumes seven megabyte of GPU memory. So let's take a look at this one as well. Um, let's open again the Chrome browser. So here we have the observable HQ landing page and I, have all, I am already scrolled down to the point where we actually want to be. So let me open up again the dev tools. So I have basically the default setup, so it is not available by default here. So I would go here and go to more tools and select the layers tool. And now I have the layers tab available here <coughs> where all the layers are basically collapsed here, but we can expand it and then we can see all of the layers here in this list and also we can zoom in here this 3D view and by selecting different movement tools, we can turn around our application and bring the application into position where we actually can see 
the layering is happening. So here you can see it nice and beautiful. So the text actually has a completely different layer than the images here up top. And we can see all of them created here. And if we select, for example, this specific layer here, we can see an, a memory estimate of 10.5 megabyte. And we can also see the composition, composition reason, a uh, compositing reason. So this one specifically has an active accelerated transform animation or transition. So we can go over to the elements panel and um, confirm this once again, but I guess this tool will be right anyway. So this is a nice tool to inspect how much memory your layers are consuming and how much layers your application actually have. And as I said before, this might not be very important for um, your desktop users, but for mobile users, this can be important, especially if you have very, very large uh, layers that consume a lot of lots of memories. So if we, for example, just select the outer document, which is pretty large, we see this one consumes 35 megabyte. So treat your la layers with caution and everything will be good. Very cool. So let's go back to finally hit the target of identifying memory leaks. And I've brought again the Snap logo for you because this is a very funny guy, I think. Okay, so let's first talk about what are memory leaks. In order to fix something, we need to know about what they are, right? So memory leaks essentially are or is memory that is allocated by your application. So something that is stored and used, uh, stored, but not used anymore by your application. So you have a global variable stored somewhere, but you not, but you don't use it anymore. And this is basically a memory leak. And if you do it too often, then this one will be the number one reason for crashing browser sessions. And then you will get the or snap error. So, the worst case is when you repeatedly allocate memory without cleaning up. So for example, if you have a component that you create, which creates a memory leak and you create, create it multiple times and destroy it multiple times. In this case, you will see patterns like this in the performance monitor. And this is where the performance monitor then also shines when inspecting memory leaks. So this is just a nice overview over time where the starting point starts with, with 10,000 DOM nodes. And in the end, after some interactions, you see all of the metrics are just rising and rising and rising. We get DOM nodes added and added and added and added and added. We get event listeners added, sometimes removed, but in the end, added and added and more added, same as the JavaScript heap size. And we end up seeing heap size increasing by 50 megabytes, DOM nodes by 70,000 and event listeners by 400. So this is definitely indicating a memory leak. And um, if you see such a pattern in your application, uh, you should be worried about it because this can end up uh, in a or snap. So what causes memory leaks finally? First of all, console logging. So this was very unexpected when I heard it the first time, but it's true. So, <clears throat> and it makes sense if you think about it. So in order to display the value in your console um, or an object in your console, it has to keep reference to it, right? It doesn't uh, create a copy just on its own. Um, it references the object to finally display it. And you can verify it by console log something, even with the closed console, if you open your console afterwards, it will still be there and print it out. So still with all, uh, also with the closed console, you will have a memory leak here if you uh, print out objects. Then we have global variables. So whenever you store something on window or just create a random const in any component uh, outside of the components class uh, scope, then you create something that is not really um, in a, uh, cleanable anymore. So you create something in a global scope and this will be stored and will be forever there and never clean up. Of course, you can reuse it and you won't do it multiple times if you import the component file again. But just so you know, global variables will store memory which cannot be cleaned up. Um, then leftover subscriptions. And this is most probably the number one reason for most 
memory leaks, like call, leftover callbacks and subscriptions to, for example, event listeners or um, intervals or just uh, other RxJS subscriptions. So whenever you have something that you do not kill, which runs forever, like an interval or a timer um, from RxJS, and uh, you reference some other value inside of it, it cannot be re released anymore because this forever ongoing callback always keeps a reference to this object. And this means that in our case, we create here a new foo object, which will always keep uh, be in memory, but also everything that relates to it. So if foo has private values like this huge data amount, then of course, huge data will also be a part of the memory footprint. Same goes for HTML elements. And HTML elements have some specifics here. So they are not only contributing uh, like JavaScript values here, because if you end up having a, an HTML element, which you cannot clean up anymore, it will get a detached element. So in this case, you just have a reference in a function that is never cleaned up in a global scope to a button that you wanted actually to remove then the button cannot be really removed. Of course, it's not part of the DOM anymore that the user sees, but it will be a detached element. So now we know what memory leaks are. Now let's finally talk about how to detect memory leaks. So we will do um, follow the same approach as we did before. Um, we will go first into a bird's eye view and then into an in-depth analysis. Let's start with the bird's eye view. So this time we can use again the performance monitor to observe memory consumption over time of our application. As I've seen before, we want, as I've shown you before, we want to indicate or see those patterns. So that those patterns can indicate, okay, this situation looks safe or this situation definitely looks like something we need to dig into. So if we see the pattern on the left side where, where all of our metrics, or even if it's only one, is only increasing over time and is never ever um, decreasing, then 100% I can tell you something is wrong. Whereas on the other side, you see there is a slight increase, but there's also decrease every time. And afterwards, at the last point in time, this is where the garbage collector could release basically everything and we are on par, on plane, like the one before. This is the perfect scenario you want to see. So then everything is fine. Um, if you have something on the left, you should definitely take a look at. So exactly, we sh should never forget to trigger the garbage collector before we analyze our heap, because otherwise, um, like the garbage collector is uncontrollable. We have no control about when um, the garbage collector of our browser decides to uh, collect something. It totally depends on your system load and your system setup whatsoever. Um, so before you do any investigation or something, then please go ahead and trigger the garbage collector manually because otherwise there's something you might uh, didn't want to see. So let's go into the in-depth analysis. So do you remember the detached elements I've talked about before? Um, where this is very important because most of the time as we develop on front ends, we are tightly coupling our JavaScript code anyway to DOM elements as we are working with components that um, afterwards get DOM nodes. And this is really cool because the Edge browser, the Microsoft Edge browser with version 93, added a new tool to, the, to their dev tools, which is called the detached elements tool, which is dramatically helping in finding memory leaks based off component oriented frameworks. So how does this work? Um, so this looks basically the same as the Chrome Dev Tools, um, but instead of the three dot menu, you have a plus icon here, and there you can uh, select the Detached Elements tool here. If you open it, you want to follow the um, following approach. So the buttons are, in my opinion, the wrong order, because the first thing you always want to do is triggering the garbage collector, so hitting um, the trash button here, the trash bin button here as the first button. Then we want to read the detached elements. So this is um, telling the browser to read all detached elements that are still kept in DOM. And afterwards, we want to analyze the heap. So 
first we know about all the detached elements and then we want to deeply analyze, analyze, uh, analyze where those detached elements belong to. So this will lead us to this list of detached elements after we followed this approach, where each of those elements should have an ID. Elements that do not have an ID anymore, you can safely ignore because they are not part of this heap anymore. On the top right, you see a total amount of detached elements found in our current example. And then we can go ahead and select one of those. And this will now be interconnected with the memory tab we have seen before and open up the retainers list. So if you remember, the retainers list will give you information about where this code is actually still in use. And in this example, you see our detached node is a list item. We select its ID. It will tell us, uh, open up the memory tab down, down here at the bottom. Then it will show us it is a detached HTML div element, and it will point us directly to the source of leakage. So we can just click basically this line of code here, and we see here context in. So this will definitely mean a detached V8 event listener. So this means probably an anonymous function in a event listener, maybe a click event or something. And by clicking this line of code, we will go directly to the source where this click listener is coming from, and we can fix it right away. So let's go to our final demo. For this, I need to switch now to the Edge browser. So this is now the Edge browser, and this is another StackBits example I'm showing here. So this one is slightly more complex than the one before. So let's first open up our F tools here. And let's start with the performance monitor because we want as at first to confirm, of course, is there a memory leak or is there none? And of course, as I've always said before, we should clear our garbage. As you have seen, we have a slight ditch here now. Um, so this was a good thing to have a clean state. And now we want to go ahead and toggle this button. And you can see, okay, now we have 120 megabytes. Let's go ahead and click one more. 200, 270, and more and more and more. So we see this stair-like pattern. And this already indicates a memory leak, but to be sure, we definitely need to collect our garbage here. So let's collect garbage. And yeah, when garbage collecting collection is not doing the thing here, then we can be sure that we run into a memory leak here. So let's figure out what is the problem. And it looks like that we also leak DOM nodes. So we can safely say um, it's kind of related here, the amount of JavaScript heap size and the amount of DOM nodes. So let's do a detached elements analysis. Okay. I want to collect the garbage again. And then we click here to get our detached elements. So now we have this list here, and it says up on the first side, object not found in memory. That is because we didn't analyze the heap yet. So when we analyze the memory heap, it will transform or analyze it and transform um, those into actual IDs. And if here's now some leftover, which has no ID, then this one can be ignored. But all of them have IDs, so it looks like um, all of them would be still kept in memories, and those are actual diffs. Of course, they are not part of the DOM now, so if we inspect it, it's completely empty, but they are still here as detached DOM nodes and stored in our memory of the browser. So the size column here is actually not indicating the amount of memory this here is stored, but the depth of the node. So if we open it up, um, we see uh, some track nodes and size is indicating that. So if we now select this ID here, then it will open up the memory tab uh, at the bottom, immediately select it, and immediately open up the retainers list and point us directly to the source of leaks. So we see here context in, and we see V8 event listener. V8 event listener indicates an event listener of an event uh, of a HTML node. And here we can just click this specific line of code and it will directly point us to our list item implementation here, list item. And we see bold toggle has an event listener to 
the event change with, with an anonymous function. And because this one is probably never destroyed, when we actually toggle our list back to an invisible or destroyed state, that's why it's still kept in memory and that's why we could find it now. So let's go ahead and fix the lines of code um, that our memory leaks are gone. And afterwards, let's check that the leaks are actually gone. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to transform our anonymous function into something we can afterwards destroy um, with the remove event listener. Let's first go quickly over the codes. So we have this class list item, which gets created whenever we toggle this um, button here. So whenever we click toggle list, I create a, we create a bunch of list items. So every DOM node you see here, so um, is actually a list item class. And this one will create um, its node template by an item template I've created, clone it, and this is the template we, we are creating it. Basically a very simple component as a class. Okay, so this specific event listener is now the problematic thing. So what we actually want to do is we want to have, for example, a destroy method, like in, like in Angular, the ng destroy method, but we are in plain JavaScript field here. So we have no framework taking care of this for us. We will have to do it manually. But on destroy, we want to use the bold toggle and use remove event listener and remove our event listener to change in order to fix it. The last thing we need to do here in the list item is to store this function as something we can afterwards reuse. So we want to store it here as a bold change listener, exactly like this. And now we can apply it here in our add event listener method. And we can also use it here in the remove event listener as a reference. Now we should be sure when the destroy method is called that our event listener is removed and the leak is gone. So let's make sure that we also uh, call the destroy method. So here we have the destroy list function, which is called um, whenever we click the toggle button again. So what we want to do is we have the item here already and we want to call the destroy method. So. Let's save this real quick, open it up in a new browser tab, and quickly confirm that the change changes here. So this one looks good. And now we want to confirm also via the performance monitor. So we open it up. Okay, we see still memory consumption, but there you go. You could see the memory got released after a couple of clicks because the browser decided to. So now you see not a stair-like uh, pattern which goes on forever and forever and forever, but instead um, it will keep only something in memory, probably even for optimization purposes. But when I now click the garbage collection here manually, then we see the heap size is back there where it should be on the very um, low level of seven megabytes. Okay, I guess my time ends here. I thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed listening to me and you learned something from this talk. Um, if you have any questions about this talk, please ping me. My email is here and also my Twitter handle. So please, please reach out to me. Thank you. Goodbye.